Hello dear friends, dear viewers. I took a long time to come back to the channel. It's been crazy. I have a full-time job and this is something that I need to do for myself and for my family. So uh, I'm trying to do the best I can and I'm sorry I'm not able to respond to you right away. Having a full-time job and not being retired or being a, a stay-at-home mom, it, these things kind of get difficult. And yeah, that's been my case. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not, uh, not intentionally not trying to reply to you immediately after you write me. I am just, I have my own job and uh, full-time and I end up working longer hours than I should be working. <laughs> And so it's kind of hard for me to get back to it. I know that I promised you, and I will never do that again. I won't promise to do a reading on someone on such and such a date. Because sometimes it doesn't happen. But I did promise to do a reading on Dominique Cummings. I know I did plan to do a reading on Dominique Cummings. And I never got around to it. Two days after I promised I'm here trying to do it. But before I start that... Oh, by the way, here are my cups. Yeah, I did them this morning. I usually do my cups like when I wake up in the morning. I live on the West Coast and I work East Coast hours because my clients are on the East Coast. So I wake up pretty early and I do my coffee and then I do a little espresso on the side. And so I make my, my meditation and my coffee really early in the morning. And then I just save them until I'm done with work because I can't concentrate if I have things on my mind. On, on this I, it, it just doesn't go through my head I can't so I basically have to be done with my work day and done with my chores before I can actually sit down and read them and give you an accurate portrayal of them so he, and nonetheless here I am and I especially want to thank Sue Ellen Peters she is always so wonderful Sue Ellen you encourage you encourage me so much and uh, you inspire me and you're so honest with your answers and so humble. I really um, enjoy your comments. Keep them coming. Um, and she said that she and a few other of my viewers that they will be interested in learning the tarot. Now, first I want to do a disclaimer. I am not saying that I'm, oh, I'm the tarot master. I'm not. I don't know anything about chakras. I'm not anyone that knows about that stuff or past lives or anything like that. I barely know a little bit of astrology from what I've heard my whole life. But um, I, I just have intuition. And I think uh, we'll get into that later. But I think a lot of that is inherited. Or if you don't have anyone in your family that has had an experience with that. If you ever lost someone you love on a, uh, or at an early age. Or if you yourself have been close to death. Then these things tend to really spring forward and so I wanted to share that with you because I think it's important I think that a lot of the people that are here on this channel are here because they have faith and they have even if they don't have faith per se in the normal things that you should or that you're expected to have faith in they know that there's something else out there and so I would say that for me, a lot of it comes from, you know, being um, a small child and um, being close to death. I was very sick as a small child. And then I lost someone that was very close to me. I told you guys, my brother. And then as a teenager, I lost my father. I think these things have really uh, opened up my intuition. And also, um, like I had mentioned before, being kind to animals above all, this will the floodgates will open. I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. I don't know what the mystery is. But I swear by this. And my mother swears by this. And her sisters swear by this. If you feed animals. If you are kind to animals. Your intuition will burst open. And I'm sure a lot of you already know that. I don't have to tell you. So anyway. Like I said. I'm not a savant. I don't know much about the tarot. But I was always interested and I told you guys that when I was a kid I went to Barnes and Nobles and I bought this tarot deck. So anyway, here's what I gather from it. So I don't know if you've ever seen Sherlock Holmes. 
if you ever watch BBC's Sherlock Holmes with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, you know that he has a memory palace or he has a way that he memorizes things. And so I'm going to try to teach you that. Uh, if you want to learn about the tarot and its history, I'm sure you can Google it. I'm just, uh, I'm more of a good student than a good teacher. I'm not very much of a great teacher. I'm more of a good student, so I will try my best. Uh, but I will just share with you what has helped me. And here we go. So the Fool. This is the beginning. Think of it as a journey. So the Fool is number zero. The first card, the first major arcana on the tarot deck. And I, if you want to learn the tarot, I suggest you start with the Rider Waite tarots. I don't know, there's something so powerful about it. The imagery, the significance of each one. And I think this would be the most powerful and most effective deck to start with, in my opinion. So here we have the fool, and the fool starts his journey. And think of, about it as a child being born, number zero, you start from scratch. You're innocent you're uh, temperamental, you cry anytime you want anything, you don't know how to get what you want, you're basically dependent on others' wisdom to help you achieve your goals. And there's a dog trying to tell him, don't jump off a cliff. So think about it as, as a baby, you know, they don't know anything. The Magician. Here is the promise that you would be. So the fool is a, is a male, by the way. Sorry, the fool is a male. So think about it as a young baby that was born. And so here's the magician. Here's what is promised to that baby. There were the wands of action, the symbol of action. There's the cups of symbol of emotion. They're the pentacles, the sy symbols of attainment. They're the swords, the symbol of intellect. The magician you will grow up to be. The infinity, you have the chance to redo yourself, reinvent yourself over and over. The candle on both sides, there are light to good and bad. You can learn from your bad choices, the light down here, and you can learn from your good choices, the light up here. Now, there are many other symbolisms to this. There's flowers and e Many symbols, but let's keep it simple. This is the promise that is for you. The High Priestess, the number two. Now she has the Temples of Solomon. You have uh, strength and you have what you found is good or with God. These are the two pillars. But she's also learning. You see she has a scroll. You need to learn. You need to have a good foundation. She has a veil, which means secrecy. The moon means secrecy. That th all these cards, I'm just giving you one or a few specific meanings. They mean many things, but for, for simplicity's sake, let's just go down that road. So the fool eventually learns that for him to develop, he needs the strength of past knowledge. Okay? There are secrets that he does not know. There are sciences and there are truths that he's yet privy to because he's too young. He just started. The Empress. Once, once he has been promised and once he has some sort of education, then he has to put forth work. You see the wheat here? He has to plant this. He has, he's expected to give back. You have water and trees. She is basically... You, you can reap what you sow sort of thing, you know, plant so that you later can collect your bounty. Be fruitful. And she also uh, represents the female aspect of it. Even though the fool's a male, a fool can also be a female. Okay. Then you grow up and you become... A respectable man, as long as you have followed these guidelines. A respectable man sitting on his 
You see how always this seed has struck me as being of cement or concrete or something like that, not wood or anything that you could come back in a uh, hundred years and then it's all chewed down. It's something that it's there for a long, long time. It's out of rocks, out of marble, out of cement, I don't know, concrete. This is a seat where you will not be the only one to occupy it. And he's holding something in his hand. He's holding something like a fruit, something that one day, one day will wither, even though the chair won't. So what that means to me is that his reign on this chair will be a lot shorter than the chair itself. I know that sounds terrible, but... And also, you know, he has a gray beard. beard. That could also mean an old man. Now, I'm just keeping it simple. This is very complicated. The tarot is very complicated. I'm just giving you things that have helped me remember, like a palace, a memory palace. Then you have the Hierophant. You become, an, you become a successful man, a respectable man. And now you have to join society. You're not just alone in the chair. There's other people around you. And they expect of you. These people look like they're waiting for you to do something or say something. So they expect you to give back somehow to society. To the norm. To the way things are ran, run. So that is the Hierophant. After you that, do that and you become a successful man on your own, you fall in love and you marry the lovers. And you realize... That life is not just business, that life is not just ambition, that there are very different aspects of life that can make you very happy, not just those of learning and ambition and success. There are other parts of life that can make you euphoric, that can give you health. You see how these people are uh, not shielded by clothes, they're not afraid, they're healthy, they're strong, you have to be brave, they're bearing fruit, and there's an angel above them, and there's the sun saying, yes, this is your path, this is how you should go, and that's lovers, and then the chariot, which means succor and help, which means you're not alone, there's someone else with you, Perhaps your wife or your husband or the people around you, the people that love you. You know that in order to have power, you need help. You cannot be alone, no matter how brilliant you are, no matter how successful you are. To be alone is to fail. And after you've achieved that, then you find true strength in yourself by yourself. You're able to tame the beast, not with violence, not with... Uh, cruelty but look at her face you know she has the infinity of the magician it's like she'd already used all the suits she already she already knows how to handle the wands the cups the swords the pentacles the light of good and bad she's already sh uh, showing her kindness her forgiveness her courage to a creature that yet does not know this and therefore she has true strength and those were the good parts of life but then as we all know life is life is full of good and bad of ups and downs and so here are the bad things or here are the bad experiences or the bad emotions or the natural evil things that come your way so the hermit and the writer and the writer waits means corruption and uh evil and secrecy and all the bad things that have to do with it but it could also mean seclusion so you have not always been the strong one you have not always been backed up and have all the people in the world to help you you have not always been the loving person you have not always been the one to rise to the occasion when it comes to your peers you haven't always been the emperor the honorable man you have done things that have that only maybe you know 
<laughs> that are not very honorable. You have not always worked as hard as you should or, or, or uh, try to put forth good. And so, yeah, so, so that's that. Here's the hermit. That's the, the, the imperfections of our nature. The hermit is corruption and lies and hiding. And it could also mean, it could also mean introspection. Here comes the wheel of fortune. It's like you made your money. You made your money. So the wheel of fortune is very much like the pentacles. I don't know if you guys ever known that, but the right away says that the wheel of fortune has to do with money. The pentacles are very much like a wheel in a circle. So the wheel of fortune to me always means money. A lot of people just think it means change, but to me it means money. So here you have a phoenix. You rise from your ashes over and over again. And she's holding a book. Knowledge will bring you forward. Here you have the temperance. You see over here the temperance is emotion. But the temperance also had to learn to have emotions. The phoenix also had to learn how to rise from her ashes. Here you have the bull. The bull is strength and, and down to earth and nature. It roams pastures. It also had to learn how to make the money. How to make things happen. And you have the lion that is full of courage. And everything that's emotion. And he also had to learn. But also this means, there are many other symbolisms. I'm just going by the most simplest one. This also means money. So it just means that things can change. That uh, and also means wealth and money and, and inheritance and an and exuberant amount of luck. And then that can run out. Whatever you did in the past. Let's say you were the hermit and you did corruption and you stole and you ran away with information. Then you have to face justice. Justice will measure you. It's like another emperor judging you. Someone that's been in your own seat judging you. But this one has a crown and it's younger. It's younger than the old guy you were before. And it has the sword to cut you. Okay, so it depends on how you maneuvered. This is a card that will judge. Then you have the hangman. The hangman to me can mean you being hung, could mean the death penalty, it could mean death, it could mean murder. But also, the hangman, the hangman could also, you see how his head is illuminated? It also means that that you're looking at things from a di different perspective. He looks very much alive. He doesn't look dead. His head is in a it's being is radiating light. So his world, his even his physical being had to be turned upside down for him to finally get the point, to finally get the picture. Now, whether you will finally get the picture or you will be murdered, According to your crimes, here comes death. And death is death. Death can mean the reinvention. Start all over again. But usually, a lot of people say that death is not a good card. I mean, it's not always a terrible card. It depends on the other cards. Specifically, the other major arcanas. But death is the end. Is the end of your journey. The fool is done. He was given, he was given the tools, he was given the love, he was given the pillars, he was given the support. And so now he was judged and sentenced and now whether he will start again or die depends on his actions. Here you have temperance. So if the fool was innocently and benevolently made mistakes and now he is to be redeemed you have the temperance so you remember last time i said um the lovers and the devil this is the angel and the lovers as well and she's holding two cups no longer two people no longer two uh sentient beings but their emotions and what is to be remaining of them their bodies are gone their bodies have been burned, uh, buried or uh, have died 
and now all that remains is their deeds and their emotions and how they behaved okay and so if you did this is your chance if you were good if you tried your best you are given another chance by the temperance however if you didn't you will go to hell you will go to the devil and you will be chained now when you're reading the tarot think of these things think of this story when you're reading it for someone i'm not saying that they're evil people and that they're going to go to hell that's not what i'm saying but let's say you had someone that wanted to let's say let's say they wanted to graduate from college right and all they did was drink and they failed all their classes this card will probably not pop up this is the card that will pop up you've created your own hell you've created your own circumstances i mean you can change them but yeah this is what that kind of mean that means that the fool made it's uh, the decision that the fool made were not to his advantage even after his death oh by the way okay so let me go back a second so this is after you die this is after you're dead you either go to heaven you go to hell okay so let's say you did go to hell i i honest i don't believe in hell personally but i'm just using it as you know according to the major arcanas so let's say you did go to hell here on earth what remains of your legacy, what remains of your family, what remains of your home is destruction. Is destruction. You made every single wrong move. And it not only affects you, it affects your environment and everything. Your legacy, your work, your home, your family, your people, you physically as well. This is what the tower means. But let's say... You didn't that you you re really did emphasize or you you the temperance did come to your rescue you have the star yes you're dead so you're losing here but you still have hope because you did good and you're judged on your on, on your journey your journey was one of good intentions and of well-being and of trying to do what good to others and of sacrifice and so therefore the star gives you hope but what is that hope that the star, stars gives you? This you leave in the back because the star is that. You see how it's nighttime in a way? Somehow the birds are up. <laughs> but how can the stars be out when the birds are up? You get it? Like she's picking the water from here and she's dumping it here. So it's a complicated card. It means it all depends. It all depends. That's what the star is, but not all is lost. The moon. The moon is secrecy. The moon is self-destruction. The moon is hidden enemies. Is that what you're going to choose? Is that what your actions have led you to? We don't know. Maybe. And here are the two pillars again. The two pillars. Let's see. Let's say you didn't choose hidden enemies. Let's say you didn't. You weren't evil. You were. You weren't intentionally taking these roads in different courses. Let's say you were the sun. So then everything is forgiven. Everything is okay. The path, the road, will be opened for you. Happiness. The sun, even if it's upside down, it's a great card to get. Okay. So the sun can mean you have a second chance at life. See the child? It means that this child is getting carried by a horse. You, everything will be easy for you. You will be young, you will have health, you will have freedom. You will be carried about. You are going to come out in the best of circumstances. Look how bright it is. Look how many plants are out there. Look at all these uh, plants. However, you have a wall protecting you from whatever was left behind. This is a new beginning. That wall is protecting you from whatever you did before. It is all behind you. You're moving forward. The judgment. So the judgment is that card. The final card. Will it be the sun or will it be the moon? Okay, so that's the judgment. 
these people are being risen so for these people it's the sun it could if let's say you get the the sun okay so good judgment good things will come but let's say you get the moon then this person is going to be judged accordingly to not in a very good light things may not come out as they to their advantage so that's the judgment and the world means you see how this is a circle and remember how the magician had the um infinity symbol and you see these ribbons don't they look like infinity sim symbols down here as well infinity 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 and it's a circle and a circle and a circle and no longer does the magician only have one light you well not just two lights but she has now has two and no longer is she a man but she's not a woman and no longer is she's on the ground but she sees above her and no longer does she have to have the temperance the temperance is already there the temperance is no longer learning the phoenix is no longer learning the lion is no longer no learning the bull is no longer learning they already know they have reached that higher level they're already done with their journey and it was a a phenomenal success they're now able to this is one of the best cards you can ever get to me it's even better than the sun the world is even better than the sun so yeah that was my personal intuition take on the major arcanas now they mean a lot more and i will discuss with you these cards were made uh, a very long time ago and things were very different back then than they are now and now you can with your own intuition kind of acclimate them to our modern world and on my next lesson i will show you that as well thank you guys for listening to me i am i am not a great teacher i am not a savant i do want the best for everyone and i hope to bring peace and some sort of hope to you all and that's why i'm doing this i appreciate your respect and your help and your uh, interest and curiosity thank you so much